Hello viewers, welcome to my channel ITJ Olympiads and AP Physics with Ambarish. And uh, today I am feeling very proud uh, uh, because I uh, I posted this challenge in the community and uh, I asked for a short and sweet solution and it turns out that one of my uh, students whom I groomed for ITJ, uh, the last ITJ, Mihir Kashkhedikar, he came up with a real uh, short and sweet solution. And uh, this problem is problem uh, of the week 85 from Harvard, Harvard problems uh, by David Morin. And turns out that the solution that's given uh, on that website that's not suitable for uh, J students uh, because it uses uh, some concept of uh, eigen values and eigen vectors. And uh, that looks fairly complicated to most students uh, and uh, not very easy to understand. So I was looking for a short and sweet solution. In fact, I have also done this problem and uh, my solution is uh, very well understandable within the JE mathematics. But uh, uh, the thing that I'm proud of is that my student has given an even better solution, even shorter and sweeter solution. So today I'm going to present both the solutions uh, in this video. Okay. And uh, so let me straight away get into the problem and then uh, we can have a discussion. It's a very nice problem. Let's see. So let me uh, read out the problem for all of you. So, uh, consider the infinitely tall system of identical massive cylinders and massless planks as shown above. So, uh, uh, this is the system of uh, cylinders and uh, uh, the planks are massless but the cylinders are massive. Okay. The moment of inertia of cylinders is I is equal to half mr square. So, uh, moments of inertia are known and there are two cylinders at each level and the number of levels is infinite. So, this direction there are infinite levels. The cylinders do not slip with respect to the planks, but the bottom plank is free to slide on the table. Okay. If you pull on the bottom plank so that it accelerates horizontally with acceleration A, what is the horizontal acceleration of the bottom row of cylinders? So I am pulling the bottom most plank with A and I want to know what is the acceleration of this maybe say A naught that I want to find out. So uh, I'll get into the analysis right away. So let's see. Okay. So first method, that is my method, it's understandable, but uh, definitely longer than Mihir's method. So let me present my method and then I'll present Mihir's method. Okay. By the way, Mihir secured All India rank 48 in JE main last year and uh, he got an All India rank 74 in JE advanced and very happy to see his solution in my community post. Okay. So method one. Uh, so bottom most plank has got an acceleration A. Let us say the acceleration of the next higher plank is eta A as shown in the figure where eta is a scaling factor it could be positive or negative so no claim to that but we know that since it's infinite so we know that uh, whatever is happening here uh, the uh, if this this is scaled up by a factor of eta then the next one is again scaled by the factor of eta that we can easily guess using the symmetry of the problem right that's uh, pretty logical now consider a point p here if i take a point p you see normal reaction normal reaction mg mg and uh, the pulling force on the plank. So if you see about this point, uh, the external torque is zero. So I can say that the angular momentum of the system as whole, entire system angular momentum about this uh, must be uh, uh, conserved. And in, uh, initial angular momentum is zero. So angular momentum should always uh, remain zero. Or I can say that rate of change of angular momentum is also zero about this. So I have tried to use the fact that uh, rate of change of angular momentum of the entire system is zero. And then I'll try to come up with the some kind of uh, um, uh, progression. It will turn out to be an arithmetic or geometric progression and an arithmetic uh, geometric progression. Let's see how we get get that. Okay. So the torque of external forces on the system at this point is zero. So rate of change of angular momentum of the system at this point must also be zero. Now recall that what is angular momentum? M times RCM cross VCM plus ICM times omega. Okay. So that's standard angular momentum equation. And if you differentiate this you get m times rcm cross acm plus icm times alpha. So that's the rate of change of angular momentum. And I know that the summation of this over the entire uh, tower must be equal to zero. Okay. So uh, that's what I've done. So I've just written summation of these terms must be zero. Now, if you look, uh, the height of the center of the first cylinder is r, then the height of the center of the second cylinder is 3r and then next one is 5r and so on. Right. So uh, m times rcm cross vcm, if you do, uh, okay, by the way, if the plank has got lower plank has acceleration A and the upper plank has acceleration eta A, the acceleration of the centers of the cylinder must be simply arithmetic average of topmost and bottommost uh, points. 
you can also say that it's bisection formula or otherwise uh, you, that you can use as a standard fact so say acceleration of the center is just the average of acceleration of topmost and bottommost so a naught is what so a plus eta a divided by 2 so that's what i've written uh, a uh, plus eta a divided by 2 that's the acceleration of this one and the next one will be eta times this and then next one will be eta square times this and so on right and what about the angular acceleration so this acceleration is a and this is eta a so relative acceleration becomes eta minus 1 a if i take clockwise uh, angular acceleration it becomes eta minus 1 a okay so and uh, relative acceleration is eta minus 1 a and the distance is 2r so angular acceleration simply becomes eta minus 1 a upon 2r okay so now uh, i need to sum uh, this is i found for the bottommost cylinders and now i need to sum up over the entire tower these two terms right so what do i get so this is nothing but m times rcm cross a naught a naught i found here and then what do i need to add uh, see uh, then 3r so that means what uh, so first term for first term i'm getting 1 and for the second term i'm writing 3 eta y because this is 3r and acceleration is eta times the first acceleration so that brings us the factor of 3 eta so 1 plus 3 eta plus 5 eta square and so on so that is m times rcm cross acm summation over the entire tower and this happens to be an arithmetic or geometric series which is a standard thing and it can be easily summed up we have standard formula for these okay and the second term uh, so uh, alpha then eta times alpha then eta square alpha then uh, and so on right so half mr square into uh, this is alpha naught that i have calculated here eta minus 1 into a by 2r and then what do i add 1 plus eta plus eta square and so on so this is the geometric progression that we need to add okay so now i just need to take the summation of this agp and this gp and equate this to zero and solve for eta so this this is one way of finding the eta uh, so, um, just for completeness, I have written the formula for sum of arithmetic or geometric progression. And now, um, uh, see MRA and MRA you can divide. So, 1 R goes and you can simply solve for eta. And if you solve for eta, you get two values of eta. Okay. Now, you see, uh, we, ca we cannot have mod of eta greater than 1. Otherwise, it will be a divergent series and uh, sum of series will not exist. But we know that since angular momentum is uh, conserved, rather it is 0. So, it cannot be a divergent series. So therefore, we choose the value of eta, which is uh, whose mod is less than 1. And if you put the value of eta, so you choose this value of eta, minus 3 plus 2 root 2. And you put this value of eta, and then you can find the value of a naught using this formula. See, a naught we had uh, found the, here. This is a naught, okay. And that's the final answer that you get. Uh, a naught is root 2 minus 1 into a. So that was uh, my approach for solving this one. I did it uh, a few weeks back. And then... Uh, community post uh, uh, mere solution that just won my heart i am now going to present the magic solution okay so here's the solution by mihir uh, by the way mihir had all india rank 48 in je main and 74 in je advanced uh, je 2021 okay so uh, so what he has done is uh, let's say the frictional force or rather pulling force on the plank here is f and let's say the pulling force on the plank here is eta f Essentially, this is Meher's solution, but I've just uh, used a little different symbols for uh, comparison with my solution. So, I've uh, kept consistent uh, uh, notation. So, that's it. So, if this is F, then let us say on this one, the pulling force applied by this plank on the upper cylinder is, let us say, eta times F. So, its reaction should be applied uh, backward on the uh, lower cylinders, right? Because this uh, plank is massless. So, whatever is the force on the up upper side, the same should be force on the lower side, right? So, if this is F, then the backward force is eta F. So, what I can write for the acceleration of the lower cylinder. So, F into 1 minus eta. So, this is F and this is eta F. So, this becomes F into 1 minus eta, right? That should be equal to mass times acceleration of this one. So, mass is M and acceleration. So, acceleration of this one is A and acceleration of this one is eta A. So, acceleration of this one simply becomes 1 plus eta by 2 times A. So, that's the force equation and the other one is the torque equation. See, accelerations and the forces all should be scaled by the same factor, right? Because they are proportional things, okay? So, eta is the scaling factor level to level. So, the same thing I am using for acceleration as I am using for force. So, this is the force one. And then, for the torque equation, F into R. See, uh, this is F into R and then this is eta F into R. So, this is the anti-clockwise torque. 
that should be equal to mass times uh, sorry moment of inertia times anti clockwise angular acceleration right so fr into 1 plus eta is half mr square okay and what is the anti clockwise angular acceleration so this is a and this is eta uh, eta a so, so relative to this it is uh, 1 minus eta a this forward acceleration of the lower uh, point up relative to upper is 1 minus eta a and uh, this divided by 2r must be the uh, angular acceleration so th this is basically tau is equal to i alpha i have written a bit in short st uh, skipped some steps but uh, i hope this is pretty obvious tau is equal to i alpha for this cylinder you can say i have written okay and now what do i do just divide these two equations and you readily have an equation in eta uh, and uh, it's a so if you just divide the two equations and rearrange that this is what you get 1 minus eta upon 1 plus eta whole square is 2 and if you solve this again you get the same roots for eta as i got using arithmetic or geometric series or geometric progression and uh, when you solve this and you take this root then as usual as per uh, as we did it for the previous solution this is what you get for the uh, final answer so that was the beautiful solution by mihir and uh, i really uh, like this problem this is a little non conventional uh, problem and uh, students usually uh, don't find this easy so that's why i wrote it's a hard challenge but I'm happy that I got some good solution. Okay, so that's my analysis for this uh, problem. I hope you enjoyed the analysis. And if you did enjoy the analysis, please do give it a thumbs up. And please share this video as much as possible through WhatsApp, Telegram, Discord, or whatever uh, medium you use for networking with your fellow students. And uh, most importantly, if you're not already subscribed to my, my channel, please do subscribe to my channel because that's what keeps me motivated to bring out a new video almost every day. And uh, thanks a lot for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one. And as always, God bless you all. Thank you.